Prepare yourself, guys. This is Chris with T3 Medias, and this is my reaction to Star Wars Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I mean, I, I like the original title better, but who cares? Let's move on. Um, first off, I got to say, I'm, I'm juggling whether or not I like this Star Wars movie better than Force Awakens. I'm also struggling whether or not this is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Empire still has a place in my heart. I love Empire. I love Jedi. Um... I even love uh, the Revenge of the Sith, but it's not up there. No, I don't think it's in my top. But this one is definitely top three. I don't know. I, I, I still have to watch it a couple of times, watch the rest of them to see where I, it lands. Definitely queue up A New Hope before you go out to the movies and see this movie. Go see it. Come home. Watch A New Hope. It fills it in so well. I, Almost like the way I used to watch American Pie and American Pie 2 back to back as one movie. There's a lot of movies out there with a sequel that just that just looks like and feels like one whole movie. Like maybe the Taken movies is also that, that way. So right off the bat, I just want to say that uh, Felicity Jones's character, I like. I like the fact that they didn't push for a love story. They they kept it straight about the action, the story itself. I was hoping that they wouldn't push a love story with uh, Diego Luna's uh, character, Captain uh, Cassine and um, Kassan. I just I was glad that they didn't push it. You could see that something could have happened there, but it didn't uh, it didn't blossom to. Uh, another love story uh, kind of a thing. Uh, Matt Mickelson's character, uh, he, uh, G uh, Gail Urso, as uh, Urson or Ur Urso, Urso. I'm gonna say Urso. Uh, from the from the beginning, you thought that maybe he was just a, a scientist or a soldier in the Empire, and then his daughter would became a rebel and thought that was some kind of a riff with that. It was cool to see that there's an explanation to why. The Death Star, spoilers guys, that's why the Death Star is so vulnerable, or why that, that one little vulnerability was there, and how he got away with installing it and, get, and making himself valuable to the Empire and, and keeping himself uh, relevant. Um, even though his performances were very short, and, and it, it was, there were a lot of very, uh, very powerful scenes from the beginning uh, to the second act. It was um, his character, if it wasn't for him, there would be no, no Jedi, no a New Hope. Uh, uh, Gail, uh, Galen Erso is, uh, oh man, like if not the hero. But um, other people, I was wondering if uh, Galen, uh, if uh, Matt, uh, not Matt Mickelson's uh, character, oh man, I'm forgetting his name, but guy who plays Ip Man, I feel like he was a Jedi, or maybe a wannabe Jedi, but the Force was with him. I mean, he kept saying it over and over again. He was blind. And he could kick a lot of ass, uh, but the force was 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 with him. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name, but um, you know who I'm talking about. The dude was awesome. The way he he kicked ass. I like the fact that that throughout the movie, from the very beginning, you could uh, you can see that they weren't doing a whole the rebels are the good guys, the empire of the bad guys kind of a thing. Both sides got their hands dirty. And people just did a by any means necessary kind of a deal to do what they feel what was the greater good. Um, and that was evident from the very beginning. It just shattered. It added, it added to the mythology of Star Wars. It didn't take anything away. It didn't, it didn't wash anything away. It didn't take something that was awesome and replace it with Hayden Christensen at the end. It didn't do any of that stuff. It, it added to the story and it, and it felt it felt real. It felt it was gritty, and this this was this was war. This was a Star Wars that wasn't geared to to just to kids. This was your 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 dad, your granddad's, your war heroes. Uh, Star Wars. Um, Forrest Whitaker's character uh, saw uh, Guer uh, Guerrera. Um, I gotta go back and watch the Clone Wars and look at some more of uh, that character's performances. Uh, Forrest Whitaker always delivers, man. And I was wondering why he, in the trailers you he had that little raspy little voice, like "Save the Dray." But I mean, the dude was like mostly machine and and could barely breathe, so it made sense from uh, the why he spoke the way he did. He was just he was a beaten down man, uh, torn uh, uh, torn up. Um, the character that stole the show was uh, uh, Alan uh, Turdick's uh, K2SO's character. This was a this was a a robot that was a part of the Imperial uh, uh, Empire reprogrammed, and because of the reprogramming, 
it made some kind of a glitch that just gave him diarrhea of the mouth. And no matter what was going on, no matter how inappropriate it was, he was going to say what was whatever was firing in his mind through his circuits or whatever. Just it's always going to come out. I, I mean, it's like it was a it was a funny scene where it was like everybody was saying, hey, uh, Jen, I got your back. I got your back. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then K2SO would come in and go, I'm with you, too. But only because Captain Cassian uh, said I had to. So, I mean, that would, I mean, this dude is like one of my favorite droids now, if not my favorite. This guy, this is a lot of, there's a lot that this movie did. Um, one of the big takeaways uh, from it was the fact that they, um, they brought back Tarkin and they had to use computer animation. It was very noticeable. I mean, if you got an eye for this kind of thing, you'll notice it. Untrained eye will think that was, it was real. The best that I've ever seen it done was in Ant-Man. But but you had Michael Douglas uh, to stand in for that. But Iron Man didn't have a much of a Robert Downey Jr.'s character didn't have much of an excuse in Captain America because it was still very noticeable then too. So the best I've ever seen it done was Ant Man. You could tell that this was a computer animated person, especially if you know of the actor, the, fa the fact that he passed away, or that you know at that age. I mean, it's what thirty something years. I mean, come on. I mean, that guy's not going to be around or, or or looking anywhere near the same as he looked. He was an old man even back then. Um, but they used computers to bring him back, and it was necessary. Uh, seeing that uh, Ben Middleton's uh, character director, or uh, Orson uh, Krennic, oh, this dude was was very very uh, brutal uh, throughout. I like the fact I like his Death Troopers that that always uh, followed him around. He had a bad squad, but he was very political and ambitious. And when you fir when you first meet Vader, uh, you know he goes through a. <laughs> He goes through a moment where he's like snitching, like he's trying to whine to Vader. Take, Tarkin takes his toys, the Death Star, and he goes and whines to Vader. And also, hey, you know, Vader had to put him in his place too. Like, dude, I don't know you, okay? I know I don't like Tarkin all that much either, but I know Tarkin. Don't come crying to me because you can't handle Tarkin and you want and you want your props or you want your credit. Go out there and do something. A lot of this stuff has been falling apart. I mean, you got spies coming at you. You got people stealing stuff from under your nose. They got, you got, we got this Death Star. And ever since you've been in charge, Krennic, things have been kind of happening on your watch, man. So don't come begging for, I mean, Tarkin's already earned his props and earned his respect with, with me, Vader. So don't, I mean, and you've been kind of a little whiny little bitch about things. So like, no, no, no. And then Vader kind of chokes him out and it was, it was pretty awesome. It felt like a Negan kind of a moment, if you will. It was very Negan-ish from Walking Dead how Tarkin was all like, thank you for making this Death Star for me, Krennic. Uh, that's mine now. I'm taking that. You did all this work. I'm taking all the credit. It explains why Krennic wasn't around in uh, episode four. Because <laughs> just not around for, what, for a reason you'll see when you see the movie. It Negan'd his ass. He negan him. He let Krennic do all the work, build him the Death Star, and then when it was done, thanks, man, taking that. Negan. Uh, it was it was the most Negan thing I've ever seen since Negan. But uh, the thing that really takes the cake is the fact that this is a gritty war movie. And when Vader makes his appearance, I'm thinking that they were going to do a whole thing where a whole army was going to come at Vader. No, this is Vader towards the, the beginning of A New Hope where... Uh, Princess Leia. That the reason why Leia's ship was being fired upon was because <laughs> they had her, and that they had that ship when the plans were beamed up to that ship, and uh, and Leia got, and they finally got it to Leia uh, painstakingly. I mean it. I mean the people who had that little chip that that Leia shoves into R two D two to make that message. I mean these guys with the with the helmets and whatnot. I, I mean it's like twelve dudes. And there's like a malfunction of a door. And these dudes are trapped in a room with Vader in one of those destroyers with Vader. I mean, when Vader, when that lightsaber lights up, you're thinking, oh, man, these guys are gone. Are they going to show it? Uh, and like a force of nature, he starts walking towards these dudes. These dudes have never seen a Jedi. Some of them might have seen um, some of the guys from Rebels, the cartoon. Maybe they've heard of it, maybe not. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that none of these, these guys have heard of Vader. Jedi's are gone. These they've heard Vader's out there. They heard about the empire, the Emperor's powers and stuff, but they've never seen it in real life. Maybe they've seen it with, uh, like I was gonna say, maybe they've seen it on the with the Rebels clan. Maybe some of them have. I'm willing to believe that everybody who died in that ship by the hand of Vader, 
didn't I've never seen a Jedi before until that day. And the day that they realized that the shit is true, they were getting their asses sliced up. I mean, Vader's using Vader's hardly making that many moves. I mean, in the way he twists his his, his wrist and the flick. Look at the flick of the wrist on on the way he uses his lightsaber and the way he just like it was like magic, like magic, like it it was like poetry, if you will. How he just disarmed him, put the fear of God in him. He, uh, humiliated them cuckold them I don't know he did totally owned them all it was bad it was so bad it wasn't even close you needed about 30 more men to even make it even a, a, an iota closer to a fair fight and Vader still would have handled it it was the most brutal killings I've seen in a long time it was like Jason Voorhees meets Freddy Krueger Michael Myers wrapped in the one the way he just walked slowly like Jason used magic like Freddy and just humiliated people like Michael Myers. I mean, it was, and it was a force of nature like Myers. It was the most horrifying thing I've seen on Star Wars. It was was Vader just just wrecking shop all the way through all the live long day without breaking a sweat. So that was worth the price of admission. Like I said, when I got home, I had to come back home and I had to watch immediately watch A New Hope. I finished it few minutes ago i enjoyed it i can't wait to see it again i'm gonna go to the theaters again to check it out a couple more times because i had fun with this movie this was this is worth the price of admission let me know what you guys think about it this was my spoiler i put in spoilers into the uh into the name of this video so i know i know i didn't announce spoiler alert at the beginning but hey uh so let me know what you guys think about it after you've seen the movie did you go home and watch uh, new hope uh, again do you th what get, let's talk about the timeline or let's talk about how you would watch this movie especially when you want to introduce Star Wars to somebody for the first time do you watch this first then a new hope then um, uh, Empire then Jedi do you watch uh, Phantom Menace first Clone Wars and just watch it watch it in the, in the order that it actually uh, comes in but if you don't want to lose people I would say and I've heard of this and I'm starting to think that this is the best way to do it I'm adopting this new way of doing it and a lot of you have probably heard of this. You're going to need to watch Rogue One, A New Hope, Empire, and then right when uh, Vader, you know, at the end of, uh, of Empire, then watch Phantom Menace, episode one, two, and three. Think about it like this. When, when Vader reveals, I'm your father, then it's flashback time. It's like, oh, no, for real, I am your father. Let me show you how. When I was a little boy, blah, 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 you know, go back in time. Then, you know, watch, then watch one, two, and three. Then watch Jedi and watch how it all ends. And then Force Awakens and then keep on going. I think that's a cool way to do it. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Hit the like button if you like my review, my reaction to this movie. Uh, comment below. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't become a subscriber. And let's just keep talking about this, guys. Till next time.